and that golf is off its <laughs> <laughs> It is, isn't it? I haven't heard that terminology before. Really? Uh, but now, Martin, speaking about um, off its... <laughs> uh, it's Evo time. Yeah. So we've shown the people how it's done in a very golfy kind of a way. Yes. You plug some kind of Lego Technics in. Yep. Uh, what's the plan for this, man? We are going to do basically the exact same thing, but using different technology. Using what's in there this is. box. Let me show you what's in this box. All right, so here is this box of awesomeness has arrived from a good friend of mine that supplies these kind of bits and hopefully this will be the correct part for my vehicle. Wow, that's a lot of protective packaging. So this is what makes this install awesome. This is not the gauge itself. This is what makes the gauge neat and clean and look good, which is exactly what we saw on the Golf, and that is this thing, which puts the gauge on top of your instrument cluster. You look down this way, so it doesn't get in the way of your gauges or anything. And, um, oh man, we've even got instructions. Very cool. So, looks good, man. now I just have to, yeah man, it looks awesome. Now I just need to get the gauge out of Supergrams, which was recycled from the 350Z, which was recycled from somewhere else. Love a good recycled part. Recycling's good for the planet, Mark. Important to wear safety glasses. There it is. Cool thing is, there's one left for Supergrams. I'll put that back in properly. I'll be able to do something cool with this one day too. There or there or there or somewhere. There we go. Perfect reinstallation. Sorry Supergrams, this is the way it's gonna be. Excellent. I got it. It's um, Supergrams has lent this to the Evo. This is a gauge art can gauge um, that Haltec uh, distribute. This is a cool little thing because you plug it in using that one connector that supplies power, earth, can high, can low, all the things that this gauge needs to display a bunch of parameters that's coming from your ECU, very similar to what we just did with the Golf. This you can actually go and choose what it is you want to see, anything from ethanol content, air temperature, water temperature, ignition timing, knock sensing, anything that the Haltech is actually doing or has some control over, you can display on here, which is really, really cool. So to install this into the Evo, we're gonna use this cool gauge pod. I'm not much of a fan of gauges sort of hanging off things. Um, in a lot of places, that's actually illegal anyway to have them like above the dash line or above sort of where your face is because you don't want to hit it if you have an accident. Um, the color will be pretty close and you can paint it if you want to. Um, to make it match better or just paint both of them. And that is literally all you need. All we have to do is plug this into the ECU. Now you can go and buy a can hub, which means you can just keep plugging stuff in and the more, like you could have 10 of these if you wanted to. Um, we but just it's need not to, a Honda, Martin, is it? It's not a Honda, so you need one gauge. And that's what I love about this, one gauge to show a bunch of parameters. So we're gonna pull some of the inside of the EVO apart, get this installed, run this down to ECU, do some fiddling with some wires, and we'll have a mad gauge. That's awesome, Martin. And of course, as soon as we finish that, we're going to nab ourselves some of the Mighty Car Mods playing cards, which will ship anywhere in the world directly to your door. 52 or 54 cards, I can't remember, there's a lot in there, um, but all the original artwork from our book that is currently not available because it's sold out on these cards. You can get them by clicking the thing. All right, Martin, Wait, let's this is work good, on man. some Evo. This instructions are good. Some pod models, some pod models have a tunnel, mouse hole for wiring. A what? A mouse hole. Okay. I imagine that would be a really small thing. Wouldn't yes. It? Like a mouse's. Anyway. Gauge holders have come a long way since the bolt on gauge cups that have dominated interiors for decades. First, we need to remove the upper and lower steering column trim pieces so we can run our gauge wiring over to the passenger footwell. There's a huge range of plastic formed interior parts that either replace, or in our case, sit on top of existing trim pieces. Although the instructions didn't make that clear at first. Unless you're doing 260 k's an hour, it's not in the way. While the part looks almost identical to the top steering column cover, it lacks the plastic clips and screw holders to hold it down, so it actually sits on top and is secured with double-sided tape and plastic plugs. Regardless of whether it's a wideband, boost, oil pressure or any other kind of gauge, this part of the process is the same. The benefit of this particular gauge is that it can show us all those parameters off the existing sensors, meaning we don't have to install anything extra in the engine bay. 
So this is the reason why you don't install your ECU and all your wiring until everything's done because jobs like this mean you're going to potentially have to pull it out again anyway. So that's why a lot of the time when we're working on cars, you'll see this stuff just sitting here in the passenger footwell um, because we're just waiting to connect stuff to it before the final installation. You want access to it until you know that everything is just right, including all your gauges and accessories and stuff connected. So all that's really need to be done now is to get this CAN cable across from the top of the cluster, across the tunnel, and then pretty much where that ECU is sitting, one of these plugs that's hanging off goes out to our wideband, which is also CAN. And just like a double adapter or a power board, we can just basically piggyback this CAN cable onto it. And because it is a network, you just tell the Haltech that it's got two things on it instead of one, and it goes, cool, and then it just works. Wow. No pinning, repinning, no adding wires, no nothing. We just literally piggyback that onto what's already there. This particular gauge works with most aftermarket ECUs and can be adapted to work with a standard one using an OBD link. And you can put, I think it's 128 devices per network is, is, is the possibility. I could have 127 gauges and um, one oxygen sensor. I'm going to get on car sales right now and buy a Honda Civic. If you're buying the kit new and not hacking it out of your other car like an old threadbare hand-me-down jumper, then it usually comes out of the box ready to plug in. In our case, we need to hack into some of our freshly installed wiring to read data from the CAN network on the ECU. We're using Deutsch connectors which are tough, easy to work with and super reliable. We're also recycling our wiring off an old unused loom which has good quality wiring in the correct gauge. For our gauge, that's English for you. There's a couple of methods to do what I want to do. Uh, basically, I need two of these. I've got one here and I need to connect it into the ECU so I could either unpin this and then I could put new pins in that have like this sort of piggybacked on the back. The problem is the pins are different sizes to what I have here, so I can't do that. The other option is to pull the ECU plug out, add more wires on the ECU plug. That's not ideal either because they may not seat properly. And the other option is to either crimp or solder these together, which is probably actually going to be the easiest and cleanest option that I have. So all I do is match up these colors, solder on there, and then I've got two plugs, one for the gauge and one for the O2 sensor. Probably much rather just crimp this with new douche pins and stuff, but I just don't have them and they take ages to get here if I order them and I want it done today. So that will work just fine. Tape it all up with some mad Tessa tape. This is some cool like cloth tape you can get. It's really neat, doesn't rub on and stuff, sticks forever. And that gives us our two connections. Right, Martin, moment of truth. Laptops in, keying on. Hey, it's got power. That's a good start. That's awesome. Now we may just have to tell the Haltech that it's there. Or we may not. I'll have a look. Oh, did it just change? Yeah, it just changed. Man, we might not have to tell it anything, but let's have a look. Because it was already installed on Super Grants. Um, Different ACU though. Uh, no, still an Elite 2500, so same type of ECU, so there's a chance that it's already getting the messages it's expecting, but... Oh, so you're not programming down here, you're programming this. No, we're going to do both, so we're going to program this to tell it that it's got a gauge, but it, it might already just be enabled, just ready to go. Yeah. Um, in Supergrams, I had to turn it on, but that's also a much older ECU, same yep. ECU, but older, and the gauge is already expecting these, si these settings, but you can change it. You can have one setting on there, two, three, or four, so we'll go through that in a second on the phone, and we can... We can change it to cool, man. see what we want to see. Sounds but right good. here, we basically just go to setup and then main setup and then devices. And we've got the CAN system. The bus selection is coming through the main connectors. So that's what Scotty was talking about before. You either have it on the main connectors or the front of the ECU. And then we just have to tell it that we've got a Haltech CAN supported dash. And that's it. Away we go. Apply. Done. And now that should just work. So the next, next step now is to reboot this ECU from here. You hear the fuel pump go. There it goes. Yeah, now it's getting up-to-date settings. Ethanol content, air temperature, you can see it changing around. Coolant temp, 30 degrees, and that's fuel pressure, I believe. But see, when you've got two gauges, those things make sense, but for one gauge, I'll probably change it up a little bit. Yeah. So we'll get on the phone and do that now. Uh, and we do that via uh, an iPhone or an Android. Or an Android, or yeah, or an iPad or whatever you want. 
So. Man, that's freaking cool. It is freaking cool, isn't it? A very, very different process to how we did it on the Golf, but a rad way to show people a couple of different ways. Exactly. Uh, and of course, there is the iPhone way as well, where some people actually use that as like their that's gauges right. and like plug in a Bluetooth thing. That's, that's another right. thing we can look at if people are keen, Martin. So yeah, one way. That's right. You can you can plug a like a OBD2 dongle. Yep. You can actually plug those into Haltex as well, can interestingly you? enough. Okay. Um, but you can yeah plug them into most cars. The, sometimes the display, the refresh rate is quite slow, which is the reason why people don't use those as okay. much as they do hardwired things like what you've got and what yeah, we've got right. here. So, gauge art. There it is. We log into that Wi-Fi. We go to gauge art. I'll sit there and complain that I didn't have Wi-Fi on for a minute. Oh. Did I have a camera on my head the whole time? Yeah. We're now in the programming mode, so on the gauge it's going to say programming mode on here. It does say programming mode. So mode. now we create a configuration and we call this select compatible ECU. That's a Haltech. You can use this with other ECUs. Next, and here now you program what you want. So we can choose one gauge or four gauges, one, two, or four. And you can also have pages, so you can have a page of four gauges, hit a button on the front of the gauge and go to the next page. Yeah, right. So we can set them up. So if we want to add something, we go, what do we want to see? Air temperature is pretty cool. Air temperature, you don't really need to update all that quickly. So we put that on medium. You can have bar gauges as well. Um, and that is good to go. So we've got air temp. On the top right, we might have, what's another cool thing to have? Boost. Boost. So on here, that'll be manifold pressure probably. You've got lots of EGTs, fuel composition. That kind of stuff, fuel lever, fuel pressure, knock retard, manifold pressure in PSI. We do want to update that quickly. So now we've got boost up the top. Um, I really like to have ethanol content because what's cool about that is if you go to a service station and get ethanol and you're worried at all about what the content is, you can see it straight away. Oh, that's cool. Fuel composition as a percentage, that can be slow updated because it just It's not going to change quickly, is it? Ethanol content. And then on here you can choose whatever you want. Intake temperature? I reckon coolant temp. Oh yeah, coolant because temp. Because that's probably, because you get a gauge in this car, but I don't think you get it on the screen like you do in a Golf. Yeah, okay. So we'd probably go coolant temperature, and that could be, say, medium speed. And there you go, you've got your four things. You can also go through to the next page and you can set another whole page of, of things, you know, that you might not want to see as often. If you're on the track, you can just hit a button and go to the next page like that, and you can add a whole another one. Or you could just put one on there too if you wanted something that updates quickly. Yeah, like that's cool. Like a big cool. boost gauge or a big coolant temp or a big oil pressure. Oil pressure is a good one to have as well on the track. So that's that. Um, Do you have to apply that or it's just done? So we just save it and um, or we have to initialize each thing. Done. And then we go basically go back, save that. And then we send that, we send, basically just send that configuration into the gauge, which, yeah, nice. which will come up shortly. All right, sending configuration to the gauge. Here we go. Entering programming mode. Yep, programming mode over here. Yep, erasing existing configuration, checking firmware. No, it's good. Oh, yeah, just restarted and by the looks of yeah, things. main menu, and it should pop up with the stuff we chose. Boom, there it is. Great. That's pretty cool, hey? Excellent, Martin. Awesome, job done. So, all I'm going to do now is just slap the dash bits back together, and we might take it around the block. Sounds good, man. Let's do it. There's a nice, simple, easy mod for either your Euro or Japanese car, and it's a nice, clean way to see what's going on inside your ECU. It's actually also super educational to be able to see things like we saw in the Golf with air temperature and how that changes based on speed. So you can start to get an idea of how different environmental factors affect the performance of your car. So there it is. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Of course, you can keep your eyes on the Faceballs, which is faceballs.com forward slash Mighty Car Mods. And of course, if you'd like to support the store, um, the Mighty Car Mods store, that's mightycarmods.com. We've got an online Online shop there with all sorts of stuff from shirts and stickers and we'll ship it to your door anywhere in the world. Martin, I think it's time for some... Apple turnovers. You Absolutely. Had one? Yeah, that with one the we custard. Got, do you remember the one we got the other day? The one we got halves. Oh, you nibbled man. one end, I nibbled the other but and then we, we met like, in the middle. Should we go and get another one? Yeah, let's go get another one. Yeah. Off to the bakehouse, my friend. Bake some tyres. 
Can you imagine what the drone feels like when it goes, you've just been purchased and you're on your way to Martin. No! Oh, come no! On. Come on, man. No! I crashed one once, remember, when we were filming the 350Z, and you only crashed one once as well, right? No, I've crashed heaps. How many have you crashed? Um, Honestly. I've crashed, uh, you crashed I've into crashed Mod Max. One... You crashed in the States. You crashed in Central Australia. Once into a fence in a farm. That was like a three, like a big drone. What's the other one I crashed? At the, at the, um, at the, when we did the mini bikes at Ludnam. Oh yeah. I crashed that one. Um, That's at least five crashes. Oh yeah, I've had a big, couple of big stacks. Good. Dear Souls. DJI, Souls. sponsor us <laughs> so we can crash your shit. Yeah, there's no way they're going to sponsor you. You're just going to crash them, dude.